Everybody wants to break into Fang. It's the pinnacle of software engineering, but how can you do it? For week one on my Road to Fang series, I spent hours and hours researching the perfect roadmap to make sure you break into these big tech companies. Throughout this process, I found four key things that every single software engineer needs to do if they want to have a chance of breaking into these big tech companies. So in today's video, I'm going to very briefly explain all four of those things and then provide my four month roadmap that I'll be following to break into Fang. Okay, so the first thing is a no brainer. You need to have good quality coding projects. Now, I do not mean your generic e-commerce apps, a calculator app, or a weather app, or even an app that you would build in classes. Everybody and their mother has that project on the resume. So if you want to stand out, you have to do something even better. This means you need to be building at least two and ideally three good quality unit tested coding projects that have a user base and most importantly, that follow the software engineering design process. The software engineering design process simply means you started with the planning phase, you had a design phase, you then built out your code, tested your code, and deployed your code. If you build your coding projects following this process, when you talk about it in your interview, you already align with exactly what they're looking for in a candidate. Then you also need to build coding projects that have a user base because the more impact you provide, the more impressive you look and the more likely you are to get hired. So after doing some brainstorming, I decided to come up with two project ideas that I believe are good enough to get me into Fang. The first one I've kind of already started and it's an exam scheduling app for my university. The entire exam scheduling process is so shitty and in a time of high stress to begin with, you do not need that. So I identified this problem in my university and built an application that allows students to export their exam calendar directly to their calendar on their iPhone or Google Calendar. It already has thousands of users and it's only in its beta stage, so you could kind of see where that would get me into Fang. Now the second project is something that is more for me to learn the technologies required to build it. It might not work, I don't really know. I'm gonna build a Rate My School. So it would work very similarly to the Rate My Prof, which is already very successful. But instead of being able to just rate one prof, you'd be able to rate the school in its entirety based off of stuff like the dorm, the nightlife, how good the profs are, um, etc. This will be built with the React.js front end, a Spring Boot back end, and I plan on hosting it with AWS because these technologies are incredibly in demand. If you have any doubts about coding projects, leave them in the comments and I could try to help you out. Now, number two kind of ties into learning coding projects and it's to make sure I'm constantly learning new coding languages and frameworks. The software engineering job is constantly evolving, meaning if you want to stay relevant, you also need to be constantly learning. For this reason, I personally am going to be learning Next.js and Go over the summer. If you're trying to break into a big tech company, I highly recommend you learn one of React.js, Node.js, Spring Boot, or those two that I just mentioned. Three, certificates. This is such an underrated way to level up your resume and your LinkedIn, and honestly, I wish I knew about it earlier. I'm going to be going with two certificates that I put a lot of research into, and I think they're the best value. So the first is going to be the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certificate. Not only do I constantly see online that this certificate helps you get into big tech, but I've seen it firsthand through some of my friends and my LinkedIn connections. So this will be my priority over the summer because I want to break into backend roles or DevOps roles. In addition to this, I want to get my certificate as a software developer with specialization in backend engineering. To do this, I'm going to follow the course careers course taught by Tech with Tim. I already started it and I love it. I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Now, the fourth thing is easily the most important part. If you want to break into tech as a software engineer, you need to be acing your interviews. All the stuff that I mentioned gets you to that door to get you the interview. But if you can't do well in them, you're never going to get that job. For this reason, I'm going to be doing 150 Lico questions. Now, I'm not just going to do these in a random order because that's useless. I'm going to follow the Necode 75 and then the Necode 150. While doing this, I'm also going to be reading Grokking the Coding Interview because it's one of the best books out there. All right, now this takes us to our four month roadmap. So in month one, the priority is going to be starting your first coding project. You just got to get the wheels rolling. By this, I mean the earlier stages of the software development cycle. You want to get the planning done, some designing and some rough draft of your code. While doing this, you want to make sure you're solving the first 30 questions of the Nico Blind 75. Also make sure you're doing a question a day to reinforce your learning. In this month, I'm also going to start with a software development course on course careers. In month two, you want to be finished your first coding project. At this point, you should be very familiar with Nicode as well, so you could easily go through Lico questions 31 to 60. At this point, you'll also have completed the software development course by Tech with Tim. 
So what I want you to do is take a language that you learned from that, for example, Go, and build a very small coding project off of this. For any ideas on this, go to Build Your Own X, and there are a bunch of coding projects with walkthroughs you could go through. In month three, we're basically restarting the process by building the second coding project. We're also gonna finish up the Neatcode Blind 75, meaning you can now move on to the Neatcode 150 and do the questions that you struggled with. For example, say you struggled with recursion, Go to the recursion section on the Neatcode 150 and make sure to do those questions first. If you're really good with arrays and hashing, do not waste your time going back to those questions. I know it's easy, but we're not here for easy. Now the main priority of this month is to start the AWS Cloud Practitioner practice. You need to be allocating at least five hours per week on this because the exam at the end is very complicated. Now finally, the last month. At this point, you'll have completed your second coding project and your resume will have improved dramatically. You'll also have made some serious progress into the Neatcode 150, so you'll be interview ready. Again, if you learned any new coding languages, for example, Next.js, build a very small coding project just to solidify your understanding. You just wanna to get to that point where if you're asked in a behavioral interview or a technical interview that's not a Leco style question, you could explain exactly what a coding language does or when you use it and that kind of stuff. Finally, at the end of the fourth month, take the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certificate exam. So I know it sounds like a lot, so I broke it down into a weekly schedule. It only comes down to about two hours of work every single day. I personally built my schedule around my time and I'm currently doing an internship, so it might look a bit different for you guys. I'll make sure to leave this roadmap in the description below so you guys could access all of the free resources I added, all the YouTube videos I highly recommend you guys watch, and a to-do list that you guys could check through while you follow along the journey with me. For everyone that's made it this far, I want you to comment that you're starting the journey with me and then come back four months later and show me the progress that you made. And most importantly, make sure to subscribe to not miss any new content.